Hello, welcome YouTube. Today I want to show you my latest Aether build. This is a dual wield Union Scepter Krieg Spellbinder. So this build is actually a really beginner friendly build I would say because the core of the build is the 5 piece Krieg set and then you use a for example Warped of Alacrity Theodian Scepter. Um, any Theodian Scepter can work. The better the affixes are the better the build is going to become. But I mean Theodian is farmable and Krieg set is farmable as well so you can start Playing this after you farm the Creek set and Theory Scepter in Elite, for example. At level 94, you can switch over to this. And also, a Spellbinder is way better for Aether damage than, say, a Death Knight or a Battle Mage before you have the Creek set, right? So you can level this all the way from level 1 to 94 as an Aether build. Probably rather as an Aether caster. And uh, then you do like the switch around from like a caster to like a melee character once you have this gear. But I mean, you can also while leveling played a little bit melee-ish, right? There's some abilities that kind of play like melee, like Hitler's Tempest or Bone Harvest or Siphon Souls. Those are all kind of like close range abilities. And also one more thing that is farmable for you as well as the Chains of Igrat. This one is a belt that is farmable from the Port Valbury dungeon. It drops from one of the Watchers. Now the other items aren't as easy to get, but you get the idea that you can make the concept of the build pretty easily. Then like some fine tuning might require some like proper farming, but I mean that is also the case with like Krieg DKs or Krieg Battle Mages right? where you for example wanna farm a Mind Warp one-handed sword. So yeah, overall I wouldn't say this is less beginner friendly than a Krieg Death Knight for example, it's probably around on the same level to be honest. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about the remaining gear later and talk about the skill allocation first. So we are Anna Cardinalist and the Necromancer making us a Spellbinder. It's kinda hard to say like which one's the main and which one is the support class here because both are kinda support classes for Flesh Warped Strikes ability, right? Let's start out with the Arcanist tree. So we have Iskandrus and Metal Exchange. This one's actually maxed out on this character, you don't really have to max this out, but I think maxing this out gave me like lots of flat damage, because we do convert elemental to aether damage, at least like a good m amount through mage lord rings. Then you also have overlord, I mean overload is only used for offensive ability and aether resistance, the dot damage doesn't really matter at all here, but it's still really good for OA and aether res. Um, elemental balance, well this is usually only soft capped on an Arcanist because of the 25% crit damage. Again, the elemental bonuses don't matter for us anyway. Mirror of Eriocktails, I mean this at uh, 12 out of 12 gives me like pretty nice cooldown on it. Like you have two sweet spots here for Mirror of Eriocktails, right? You have one sweet spot at 7 out of 12. Up to 7 out of 12 you get like 2 seconds. Um, reduction per point I believe and then between 7 and 12 you get like one second reduction per point and then after 12 you would get like 0.3 as you can see here so if you want to reduce this cooldown even lower you can for example like pull some points from Iskandras or from Overload and put them here as well I would not recommend it though because like the diminishing returns are just too much right you get like 0.3 seconds per point for the orbital cap points not really that worth it uh, next up we have Maven's Fear of Protection. I mean, yeah, any Arcanist wants this, and also any Arcanist wants this to be as high as possible. You don't have any penalty for this anymore. So yeah, 17 out of 12 here. This is the highest I could take it with this build. You can probably take it higher if you have some, like, other gear. Um, 9 of, out of 10 for Conversion. Conversion you wanna put at either 6 or 9 out of 10. Those are, like, the sweet spots usually. And this build kinda is in dire need of CC resistances, unfortunately. So we have to put it to 9 out of 10. Reckless Power. Um, exclusive skill here, 22 out of 12 points. This one gives us huge Aether flat damage as well as Aether percent damage, as well as, as attack speed and also physical to Aether conversion, which doesn't matter at all, to be honest. I mean, this exclusive, honestly, is still one of the worst exclusives right now on patch 1.6.2. And I still kind of wish they would buff this a little bit, because compared to other exclusives, it is still a little bit lackluster. Uh, that said, it is the best here in this case, because Creek set gives Reckless Power like pretty nice uh, bonuses, right? On the 5 piece you get flat resistance reduction and bonus Aether damage for Reckless Power, so yeah, this build is kind of forced to use Reckless Power. And yeah, for this build it's actually good. But in general, Reckless Power isn't like the best. Um, in Afrokos, 12 points here, we are not really spirit dumping on this build. I mean, we could maybe, it would be also worth it because Aether damage scales of spirit. I wasn't able to do it so far. If you are able to do a spirit dump version of this, feel free to put inner focus higher than 12. I feel like if you're not spirit dumping, it's not worth it to put inner focus beyond 12 out of 12, beyond the soft cap. So that's why we're just soft capping it here. Uh, one point at Arcan Worlds, not a bad ability, but like not amazing either. 
nullification 10 points here for the reduced cooldown, as well as 33% elemental damage reduction, and obviously the um, dispel ability, right? Really nice at 10 points here for the reduced CDR, I mean reduced cooldown. Mental accuracy, 1 point, I mean we don't really need casting speed, right? It's just a, like a 1 point for 600 energy, that's pretty good. And also skill energy cost reduction is... It's not bad either, like 13% for 1 point, sure. You can like just 1 point those, it's really good. Fabric of Reality, you wanna max those out because of the flat Aether damage, percent Aether damage, and most importantly the uh, damage to Aetherios, Aether Corruptions, and Chthonians, right? That is multiplicative damage, that is really good. Next up we have the Necromancer class, so we are using Reaping Strike, 9 out of 10 here, to get the 29, 25% uh, chance to be used, right? You want this chance to be at the cap. Um, then also have Necrotic Edge for the 4 targets at 7 out of 12. I mean, you could put it to 12 out of 12 for 5 targets, but I feel like the 5 points of investment just to get like one more target is not really that worth it. Uh, one pointer is so Siphon Souls and Blood Boil, as well as the Transmitter Seer Souls. This one is not needed unless you have the Conduit that gives you Aether Resistance Reduction to Siphon Souls. Then for Bone Harvest, well, this is just a one pointer here, right? This doesn't really deal any good damage if you don't have a two-hander anyways, at least. Unless you're not focusing, unless you are focusing on those, right? Now, Soul Harvest is the main reason why we use Bone Harvest in the first place. This one gives you flat cold and flat vitality damage, and we are converting vitality and cold damage through rings and belt to aether. Uh, not all of it, but a huge amount, and it's definitely worth it to use Soul Harvest for that. And yeah, like flat damage, obviously it's super good for default attackers for anything that uses weapon damage, right? Next up, we have Ill Omen. This one is for the 25% all damage reduction on enemies. Well, it's pretty nice procor as well for, for example, I'm using it for Phoenix Fire here. So yeah, overall a very good defensive debuff that you want to use whenever you can. So basically all the time. Spectral Binding, nice self buff, uh, gives me huge Aether damage as well as percent Aether damage as well as HP and OA. So yeah, we're making use of every single stat here. So yeah, you want to push this as high as possible, obviously. Uh, Spectral Wrath, this is the only Aether Resistance Reduction ability or buff that we have from Masteries. Again, a must-have and you wanna max this out as high as possible. Uh, Mark of Torment, this is just a 1-pointer. I mean, 6 out of 10 is the sweet spot, 7 is like whatever. But I mean, yeah, 1 point for 7 points here, already beyond the sweet spot, so you don't really wanna like put more points here unless you feel like you need it for, I don't know, some like time dilation shenanigans. Let's check out the devotions and you will see that I'm actually not using time dilation right now, even though I'm a spellbinder. I know time dilation is really really good on spellbinders, but right now I've had better success with Phoenix, because Phoenix like a little bit more consistent kinda. That's uh, time dilation is really good still, and if you like time dilation more than Phoenix for example, sure go for time dilation. What I'm using though here is Spear, right? I'm using Widow. I'm actually using Chariot as well for the stun resistance, because the build kinda needs it. Um, Jackal, Imp, Satyr's Guide, Eel, Watcher, Ghoul, Phoenix, and Throne. Now, Throne and Chariot have like the main purpose to just um, give me stun resistance, as well as like defense and offense, right? Uh, Phoenix has the purpose to give me flat absorption. Ghoul as a circuit breaker, this one for well, spammable damage, right? Um, Jackal filler, these are like fillers, like good de filler devotions. I mean, Watcher is pretty nice defensively for DA as well. And Widow, like a must have for any Aether or Lightning build, right? And Spear of the Heavens, I like it a lot for melee, Aether, and Lightning builds. Okay, so here in Grim Tools, let me show you how to make these devotions. So, first of all, you want to aim for the Imp. This is going to be your first devotion that you should use, even while leveling. You could put this to whichever ability you are spamming, right? You want to rock this as often as possible, and I'm gonna use it later on for Flash Warp Strikes, right? Then you wanna make your way to Widow as fast as possible. You just use, say, a Spider or a Raven or a Skoros Light or a Hawk if you use a pistol. Um, for leveling, I would suggest you either Spider or Candle, probably. And then you use the Widow, right? Also, you wanna use uh, Eel and the Satyr's Guide. And then you wanna make your way towards Phoenix as fast as possible, actually. And Phoenix needs 3 yellow, right? For 3 yellow, you're gonna use one Crossroads here and one in Watcher. You can also get Watcher before you, for example, got Sailor's Guide or Eel. Like, you need one of these two to, like, uh, be able to use Watcher, right? And then get, like, Sailor's Guide or Eel, for example, after you get Phoenix, right? Now we get Phoenix next, and put this onto, for example, El Omen, right? To proc this reliably as well. Then we also want to go for Spear of the Heavens, Chariot, 
Ghoul. So if you're not leveling with a weapon damage ability, you can delay Ghoul further. But if you are using a weapon damage ability while leveling, such as for example Bone Harvest, right, or Kaldor's Tempest spam, right, then you can use or like you should go for Ghoul ASAP, you know, right? um, or like once you start using Flash Warp Strikes as well. Maybe you got like a scepter or normal or elite already, right? Then you should play with ghoul ASAP, right? So we got ghoul, um, we got empty throne, right? And then we go for chariot, bind us to whichever passives we have, right? Like spectral binding, reckless power. Now we want to take out the greens again, like we take out the spider again. And we take out the one red that I had here. And I just need jackal now to be able to use spear of the heavens, right? And there we go. Now let's also quickly talk about the gear. So mandatory are a art of Thirdin Marcel, right? At least one. Two as well possible if you have once you have like either a metal that allows you to do a wield or a relic that allows you to do a wield. Um, you can use like a blade sword talisman really early on already um, to do a wield. So like dual wielding in Grand is not that big of a problem. Uh, that said, for end game you want to have dual wield available on your metal and not even your relic because relics like dual wield relics aren't that good and you want like another relic for example like agrix menace here that i'm using this one gives me attack speed plus one arcanus bonus damage to ethereus and aether corruptions as well as the agrix menace uh, proc uh, i didn't get lucky with the completion bonuses as you can see proliferation and shattered star are both useless for this build obviously you can also use serenity instead of agrix menace if you prefer that it's really good as well. And yeah, for dual wielding, I'm using Dire Wolf Crust. Dire Wolf Crust also gives me a weapon pool skill uh, in the form of Dire Wolf Claw, right? This one has a 12% chance to be used. And then I'm also using Double Seed of the Void, giving me like two additional weapon pool skills alongside some attack speed, each giving me another 16% weapon pool skill chance. So together we have a 44% weapon pool skill chance just from components and like from items, right? And thus, alongside my Ripping Strike and my Necrotic Edge will put up my chance to use a Weapon Pool skill up to 92%. So this build has a 92% chance to proc one of those uh, five Weapon Pool skills. And then, like, depending on chances, uh, it will have, like, a higher chance to, for example, proc Ripping Strike than the others, etc. Right? Now, the other mandatory set is obviously the Creek set. The Creek 5-piece set is a must-have here for Aether melee characters like this one and yeah this one is target farmable and elite already and it's one of the most beginner friendly sets in the game pretty uh, nice to get and easy to get actually all right so the belt again i said this one is target farmable as well you get it from the port library dungeon right and this one um, is also has the purpose to convert vitality damage to aether for me as you can see i didn't get the best roll here but uh, it's okay moving on to the rings we have the mage lord band and the mage lord signet these two are there to convert elemental damage to aether as well as giving me flat aether damage and also has the aether smash ability give me another aether proc whenever i crit for the amulet i'm using the conduit of undying whispers i so told you before as well obviously you want the siphon souls conduit here that gives me aether resistance reduction to siphon souls but after crafting a total amount of 22 conduits and still not getting the right one that i wanted I, uh, well, I didn't quite give up. Actually, this is conduit number 23, right? Uh, I didn't quite give up yet. I'm still gonna craft more to eventually get the Siphon Souls mod. Um, but yeah, I just settled for this one for now. It's not terrible either, but it does, um, reduce my damage a little bit compared to if I had the Siphon Souls mod on those, right? And yeah, for the pants, I'm just using Mythical Wraithborn leg wraps. I mean, these are really good overall for, like, an Aether Spellbinder, obviously. Also, one thing I forgot to talk about, right, is my... Metal Augment, the Rune of the Dark Progenitor, I'm using this not for the Chaos damage, I'm using it for the flat OA and the A reduction, because I believe I don't have any source of either OA or the A reduction on this character yet, and if you don't have that yet, this rune is actually really good, and also another reason why I'm using this is it is a jump, which per se isn't like the best type of movement ability in my opinion, but you can use a jump both defensively and offensively, right? And since a Spellbinder doesn't have a movement ability on its own, um, I do not really like to use, say, a Shadow Strike ability on a class like a Spellbinder that doesn't have a defensively usable movement ability. So a jump can be used both offensively to engage or defensively to disengage, and also has this OA and DA reduction on it. I like that a lot. 
um, if you don't really care about the OA and DA reduction too much, or you want to use like a charge or a teleport instead, feel free to use that instead. Um, just don't use like a Shadow Strike ability on a character like this, because especially for harder content, you do want your uh, movement ability to be usable defensively in some situations, otherwise you might just get overwhelmed and die, right? Alright, let me show you the world in action now, but... Oh yeah, we got a totem here, nice, nice. Seems good. Yeah, the main weakness of this build is its uh, lowish armor and also the lowish physical resistance, right? 20% physical resistance, like 2.1k armor or 2.2, like 2.1, right? 2.1. Against like small amount of physical damage, the absorption from Phoenix helps a lot. Um, against big physical damage, there are only two ways to handle it, right? Either to have Mark of Torment or Mirror of Erectus ready for it, or to simply just don't get hit right. And that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Give me the your blooms. Blooms, 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 blooms. Blooms are still like the most important uh, map to farm in Grim Dawn, right? Like the bird who can farm the blooms the fastest is like the best bird ever. Probably a vanquisher bird, right? Alright, let's check out the grove. Hello, kitty. Yeah, you could feel my low armor and low physical resistance at her first attack, right? Taking like almost all, half of my HP. Um, but I mean, we have enough life steal. We had Mark of Torment up instantly, so it's not too bad. Also don't forget to check out this blender, you can sometimes sell you some good rings or components or or guns, right? whatever you want. Alright, Mr. King of the Jungle, I mean King of the Fumble rather. Slotzar, Aether Gains. Mm. Yeah, we are fumbling quite a lot on this character, right? but it's still okay. Also we have another totem in here, nice.
Alright, let's see how we fare against this end boss here. Um, I might want to save both my Mark of Torment and what the hell is this guy doing here? Hello? <laughs> okay. I might want to save these two abilities for stage 2, right? Yeah, that's the good proc, right? Oh, I didn't cast Mark of Torment actually, whoops. Oh, he spawns these, right? We can just mirror that. And that's how we kill him, right? Yeah, you just... Let go proc first, or maybe second after Mark of Torment, right? And then you just press mirror whenever he spawns his volcano as right? So, um, yeah, this character is pretty good at killing Gargaball, I would say. Alright, so after the Ancient Grove run, I tried to craft another conduit, and I actually got the conduit that I want now, so... Conduit number 24 has minus Aether resistance reduction to Siphon Souls, finally. Uh, the bad news about this is that this one has poison resistance, the one I was using before had chaos resistance, and the build is kinda low on chaos rest, right? Um, it was not good either before, but it's not like, even lower now. Also, that is because this build does not um, have access to Kaimon's augments. It, like, you will see that my augments here have vitality or chaos resistance, for example, right? And it would be better for those to be 7% wit and 7% chaos augments instead, right? Giving me like 14 chaos, 14 wit instead of 12, 12 on like two pieces, right? But yeah, that is a comments chosen augment. So if you want to like uh, get the most out of this character, I suggest you to side with comments chosen instead. I mean, how do you do that as a necromancer? Well, you level as an arcanist up to. Oh, my cam died again, holy shit. Well, okay, it might actually be dead for good now, we'll see. So, yeah, um, how do you side with Comets Chosen as a Spanbinder? Well, you level as an Arcanist up to Act 3, right? And you side with Comets Chosen before choosing a Necromancer. And then you can choose Necromancer afterwards, and they will still tolerate you even on the higher difficulties. So you just need to side with Comets Chosen once, and then you can still stay with comments chosen even if you are a necromancer but yeah you have to not be a necromancer the first time you choose them also another way to uh, make things easier would be to have chaos resistance or even stun resistance on the belt i rolled cold poison and elemental on this one the elemental resistance is obviously super helpful as well anyways let's check out some new endgame dungeons here with a new setup all right i'm gonna do a quick sot here and the cam actually works again uh, my hands actually hurt after like hitting it for that long. The camp is so weird, man. Like, it's in a state right now where it sometimes won't work. Like, it gives you this white screen. But, like, if you hit it, it sometimes uh, will work still. And sometimes you need to hit it for like half an hour, kinda. <laughs> and that works. That's so weird. I don't know. I should probably, like, uh, screw it up and, uh, like, uh, not screw it up, but, like, literally use a screwdriver and open it, right, and, uh, yeah, see if I can fix it, maybe. But yeah, whenever you go for a SLT round, you should always check out the Salal boss here, as well as the totem spawns, right? You have one totem spawn point here, one here, one here, and one over here. So, yeah, make sure to check those out as well while you, um, yeah, aim for a SLT run, right?
All right, Elgor, please give me a good uh, Ambrosius Blade or Smetal Rant. That's what we need here. Never ever am I fucking lucky. <laughs> what is this? Eternal Vigil. Oh well. Alright, so I wanna go for the totem, but as you can see, and this is like the longest journey onto the totem. Okay, I mean it could have been worse, right? It could have been like this way closed and this way open, and I would have to like go all the way around. Aldenar's vanity. Alright, Alchemos, let's go. Oh, he has a soul rand. Nice. You can already tell by the look of this weapon, right? Seems good. Alright, so let's also check out the Tomb of the Heretic. And uh, there was a totem over here, but I don't see it on the map anymore. There we go. Yeah, it seems like the bug is still happening sometimes, right? Petrification is kind of annoying sometimes, right? And this character probably doesn't have the best petrify resistance, right? We're gonna see... Has, um, yeah, 29%, right? It's only from Maven Sphere, from conversion. So we gotta watch out for petrification in this dungeon. But yeah, enemies are corrupted here, which means they have less 8th crest, which is pretty great actually for this build, right? Alright, let's see how we fare against the Magis. We have Consar and Arissa. We gotta be maybe a little bit careful, right? Because we don't have the best overcap. And we got hit. We just mirror this, right? And then use Marco Torment again once it's down. Yeah, I mean, it's. Even with, like, not the best overcap of resistances, it's not that hard to do this, right? Yeah, you can actually feel the damage from the new conduit, right? Like, I feel like this build has... Definitely more damage than before. And that actually also makes it a little bit tankier because of more life still, right? But yeah, you gotta be careful with getting clapped here. By watchers. And also, you should check out this shrine, I mean, this vendor here. This vendor always sells you a purple mat, right? For example, like a brain matter. It can even sell you a completed uh, skeleton key, right? So, yeah, always check out this vendor and buy its purple mat. And also, oh yeah, if you are having trouble finding the coined recipes, this um, vendor now also sells you coined recipes. Um, so, for example, the coined of Undying Whisper that I'm using on this very character right now. Um, if you don't have the blueprint yet, check out the vendor over here, 
and he might sell it for you, right? He's selling right now the Eldritch Whisper one, so yeah, that's the one for Oathkeeper. Oh no, for Architus actually. And uh, yeah, I mean, if he sells a non dying Whisper Conduit, buy it there, and uh, yeah, for this book. So actually, the Conduit's got a lot more beginner friend now than before. Like before last patch, the Conduits cost like 10 blooms instead of 6, and also they were just a random drop node. So they were like really hard to get, and now since this patch, since the guy over here can sell it to you, and also they only cost you 6 blooms to craft, um, Conduits have become, I mean they're not really like super beginner friendly, but at least like a lot more beginner friendly than before, right? So they're still kinda hard to get, but not as hard as before at least. And you can basically target farm them by like doing those dungeon over and over, right? so it's a huge upgrade actually. Also yeah, Morganath uh, should not be a problem at all with this character if you juggle your Mark of Torment and Mirror of Reactors right. There we go. And last but not least, we're also gonna check out Loka, right? So for the Loka dungeon, as always, check your freeze resistance, right? Uh, we have 80% here, which is mostly due to this belt. So if you have this belt, um, you should have pretty good freeze resistance already. And yeah, that's why we don't need any pots for this area here. So we can safely farm some Dark One pieces here as well, maybe. Um, if we didn't get the skill disrupted like that, holy crap. Also the Bloodkeepers are healing, right? Why are you... what the... he's running. Yeah, okay, I mean this area can still be a little bit scary, right? My go proc there. Arcane's in here as well. This is not a easy dungeon to farm, right? Anyways, let's move on here. We still have one guy missing. Who has a chance to drop the Dark WhatsApp? I like the confusion of Mark of Torment, or like, no, I mean, Illumin, right? Uh, yeah, I like the confusion of Illumin a lot for areas like these when you don't want to, like, fight all the enemies, right? You just want to, like, go through all the trash towards the, the boss down here, or like the elite down here that you want to kill, right? It's pretty handy actually. Like Crucible players might not like this, but I like it a lot for campaign. So against low card usually I use some pots against them, at least for the first time, and if you're not too experienced with the fight as well, you should use some pots like HP pots, uh, fire resistance pots, etc. Right? That said, I'm gonna do it without pots here, so let's go. He has a hammer, more coins. the boob crop? The good proc on it. <laughs> there it is. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. Honestly, this spell is really good against local. And uh, this makes this build even more beginner friendly, like even better for beginners actually, because I mean, yeah, you need like a Theodian Scepter, you need the Creek set, um, you need the Conduit, which you can now farm in the new dungeon actually. 
if you don't get it through a random drop. Okay, Mage Lord ring set is not that easy to get, obviously. It is a blue set though, so it's like a little bit easier to get than random purples. The belt is target farmable. So basically everything here is target farmable except for the pants, the rings, and the amulet, right? And the relic. Um, you can always use a relic called Haunt if you don't need the relic slot for dual wielding, right? Haunt is a pretty nice relic that has another ability that gives you Aether resistance reduction. And for pants, you can just use whatever defensive pants you have, like maybe Lag Plates of Valor, for example, those are like mythical blue pants that are pretty good as well. And yeah, for the metal, you can use whatever you find as well, as long as you... Uh, use dual wielding on the relic. So yeah, my final conclusion for this build right now is that it's a actually really good beginner spellbinder that can safely compete with any death knight or battle mage out there that's using creed set. It might even be better than those to be honest. And the latest buff to these flash warp strikes made the build kind of good actually. And also, well, the nerf to dying god made me not use dying god obviously anymore. But instead we have Phoenix now. This is better defensively anyways. And yeah, I mean, it's just a great build honestly. Even with this... <laughs> Garbage armor absorption I have right now, right? 84%, I mean, yeah. If you are more of a armor guy, um, yeah, you should probably get some more armor, right? Like, more armor absorb, like, get a scaled hide here on your pants instead, maybe, like, a another living armor in your chest. But the problem is you need both vitality and chaos resistance, right? And yeah, if you're not sided with comments chosen, as I said earlier, sanctified bone in your chest is, like, just kind of too good to pass on, right? So yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for checking out this build highlight video of my spellbinder, of my dual wield flesh warped strikes creek set spellbinder. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you liked the video, give this a like and a sub as well. And also check out my other videos about this guy. We also killed uh, Captain Bourbon and his clones. We killed, um, we did SR 50 to 51 in hardcore, which means you can safely go to SR 60 on softcore with this character. So this character is also good to like farm the SR set on softcore if you want to use this as your first character. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you around on the next one.